Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight for the Meet the Authors Holiday Romances panel. Um, just real quick to let you know, this event is part of Orange County Library System's Random Fandom Week. We have events all week for all ages, celebrating everything from Schitt's Creek to Stranger Things to Star Wars. And you can visit OCLS.info slash random fandom for a full list of events. And now I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our moderator for the evening. Raquel Henry is the co-founder and editor of Black Fox Literary Magazine, editor-in-chief of Voyage YA Lit Mag, and owner of the writing studio Writers Atelier. She's also the author of Holiday on Park and is obsessed with Hallmark Christmas movies, which is why I asked her to moderate today. So please welcome Raquel Henry. Hello. Hi, Raquel. Thanks so much, Sarah. Thank you for doing this today. I'm going to go ahead and take myself off the screen and you can introduce all the writers we have today. Okay. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, it's no secret that I am a total holiday romance nerd and I love the fandom that comes along with it. Um, so today I'm going to introduce the authors that are going to be on the panel today with me. Um, first up is Christina Lauren. And Christina Lauren is the combined pen name of longtime writing partners, Christina Hobbs and Lauren Billings. They are New York Times, USA Today, and number one international best-selling authors of the Beautiful and Wild season series, The House, Dating You, Hating You, the critically acclaimed autobiography, Love and Other Words, The Honeymooners, and more. Their latest novel, In a Holidays, was released October 6th. Welcome, Christina Lauren. Hello. Hello. So excited to have you here. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Priscilla Oliveras. And Priscilla Oliveras is a USA Today bestselling author and 2018 RWA Rita double finalist who writes contemporary romance with a Latinx flavor. Her latest book, Island of Fear, made o the Oprah Magazine's 28 of the Best Beach Reads of Summer 2020 list. A self-professed romance genre junkie, Priscilla's also a sports fan, beach lover, Zumba aficionado, and connoisseur of hammock naps. Welcome, Priscilla. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Glad to have you here, Priscilla. Uh -huh. And then next up, we have Farah Roshan. USA Today bestselling author of The Boyfriend Project, and she hails from a small town just west of New Orleans. She has garnered much acclaim for her Holmes Brothers and New York Sabres series. When she is not writing in her favorite coffee shop, Farah spends most of her time reading, cooking, traveling the world, visiting Walt Disney World, and catching up on her favorite Broadway shows. Welcome, Farah. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hey. All of the cool stuff is pre-COVID, of course. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right, for Disney World for a second. <laughs> Welcome, Sarah. Um, and last but certainly not least, USA Today best-selling author Nancy Nagel whips up small town love stories with a dash of suspense and a whole lot of heart. Now happily retired, she devotes her time to writing, antiquing, and the occasional spa day with friends. A native of Virginia Beach, she currently calls North Carolina home. Nancy is the author of Christmas Joy and Hope at Christmas, both of which have been turned into film for Hallmark Channel. Oh, wow. Welcome, Nancy. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk with you all today. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah, likewise. Thank you for having us. It's fun to be here. So, yeah. So I was thinking um, maybe you guys could just go around and give us a little taste of uh, maybe your most recent holiday romance. Um, and, and if not most recent, maybe your favorite holiday romance, because I know some of you have written several. So maybe we could go around and give the audience a taste of you know, what you guys are writing. Or like, sure. who's going first? <laughs> <Are> we, <laughs> first? <laughs> we can totally do it in order, or you can go, go yeah. out of order if you want. Okay, right, I'm, I'm next in line, so we'll go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm Christina. Yay. Hello, everybody. And um, I'm Lauren. 
this is our most recent book in a holiday. Amazing. And I'm I'm gonna let Vogue do the summary because I suck <laughs> at it. This is the, <laughs> the joy of having a co-author. <laughs> All right. Okay, I can do this. So in a holidays is our first um um, holiday romance that came out on October 6th. And it is the story of Maylin Jones. She is very bound to tradition. She goes to the same cabin every year in Park City with the same families and they have the same traditions and she's very wedded to these things that she loves so much. At the beginning of the book, she wakes up and she realizes she had a little too much eggnog the night before. And although she has been in love with Andrew, one of the guys in the family, another family, not her family, um, her whole life, <laughs> She got a little tipsy <laughs> and made out with the wrong brother. And then she finds out that they're going to sell the cabin. She hates her job. She's still living at home. She just, everything feels like it's just going terribly for her. So she throws out a wish to the universe to show her what will make her happy. And the next thing she knows, May is back on the plane at the beginning of the holiday. And she has to kind of keep continuing time over and over until she figures out what it is that will make her truly happy. So cool. See, she's so good at that. <laughs> yeah, I love that. There's a little bit of a twist on that uh, trope. There, it's really cool. Yeah, I mean, it's like Christmas is the time you can be a little magical, right? Exactly. So. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> um, maybe on my screen, Nancy is next. So maybe Nancy. Yes, yes. So I have a lot of Christmas books. So I'm I was going to say, pick one of the <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you about a heartfelt Christmas promise that was just released on September 29th. And it's the one I would love to show you one, but I'm in the middle of moving. So I'm in this empty room right now oh, <laughs> like, on a bar stool because that's the only thing that's not gone. Um, but it's the book with the little puppy on the cover. And um, Oh, it's just a wonderful story that's set in the small town of Fraser Hills, North Carolina. And just to share a little backstory, it was inspired way back in 2014 and 15 when uh, Budweiser had the Super Bowl commercials with the Clydesdales and the puppy. Remember the puppy and the puppy love commercials and that puppy got getting in trouble and yeah. Clydesdales were backing him up and that handsome rancher in that commercial. Oh my God. <laughs> so he had been on my mind, or I mean they had been on my mind <laughs> for like all these years. And um, I finally had the chance to write a story that incorporated not only an adorable puppy that helps pull a hero and heroine together, mm -hmm. but um, instead of Clydesdales, I have Percheron horses, which are still a draft horse, but we have a Percheron farm right here in Kernersville, North Carolina. Ooh. So I integrated some of that and my experiences there on that farm. And um, it is just a super fun story. Not only do we have our hero and heroine's journey, but there's also in a, a senior romance in it and then a third little love story of a 16 year old who's going on her first uh, formal dance at the holidays so lots of love and community and and hope and uh, it's all wrapped up in a pretty bow around that little puppy's neck <laughs> oh I love that <laughs> love it thanks Nancy you uh, are <laughs> Sarah do you want to go next yeah, sure. Um, so my latest is actually um, earlier books uh, that I got back from Harlequin and I put them in a collection called Christmas Kisses. Uh, and it's Tuscan Nights and Second Chance Romance. Um, Tuscan Nights takes place in one of my favorite places on earth, Italy, of course, in uh, Tuscany and Rome. And it's I'm, I'm going off my head now. Um, it's Nyla and Aiden's story, and um, Aiden is the brother of Nyla's uh, former fiance, who left, who she left at the altar, and he was always oh, in love with her. So uh, it takes place about a year after that happens, and he goes to Italy to win her because he had always been in love with her, um, and. I, I just love Italy, so I loved writing, you know, Rome at Christmas. Who, who? Oh, I love it. Um, and yeah. Yeah, romance is. I realized that's another sibling story. It is Ayana and Jackson, and Jackson is uh, Ayana is the younger sister of Jackson's best friend, who is getting married in a um, huge luxury resort in Colorado, and 
uh, the brother has cold feet. Um, and it's up to Ayana and Jackson to try to find him to so that he can get married. And I remember they dated like in the past and, you know, he broke her heart. So she hates him. Yeah. It's, I'm, a, I'm a Trump Ooh. person. So I'm not, you know, I was like, yes, yes, I, yes. I know. <laughs> yeah. So if we were both, like I said, they're both older stories that I put into uh, my own little collection called Christmas Kisses. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just, I love them both. So. Okay. Yeah. Also, for trope lovers, Mistletoe Affair has <laughs> best friends, divorced brother, single dad. Like, it is <laughs> oh crack. my goodness! Like, like a I love it. It. <laughs> Everything I, love I want in a book. <laughs> <laughs> right, nice right. trope tastic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, Priscilla. <laughs> Thanks, Vera. Um, hey. Priscilla? So yes, I guess it's me. So my um funny, my my first two books in the Match Perfection series, His Perfect Partner and Her Perfect Affair, took place over like Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, and the, and then into the new year. And then Kensington asked me to invited me to participate in the Fern Michaels holiday anthology, and they wanted a novella in the Fernandez Familia. And so Voila, their cousin decided to come visit from, from Puerto Rico. And so um, Holiday Home Run, it's now on digital. If, if you, the print version is, is in the Fern Michaels, A Season to Celebrate anthology, but it's um, this year, I knew that was gonna turn off. Um, this year, Kensington um, pulled it out and so you can get it now as a digital standalone, but Holiday Home Run is, um, I, Christmas is my favorite holiday. So of course, when they said, would you want to? I said, yes. Um, and but it's also Julia in Holiday Home Run is named after my abuela, who was a huge baseball fan and um, can tell you anything about baseball, um, which is just like Julia. And so the story itself is about Julia has come to Chicago where her cousins are for an internship. She's an event planner and her family thinks she's just there for the internship, get some, get some experience and then go back home to Puerto Rico to eventually take over her, her family's catering business. But she really wants to go from internship to full-time job and stay in Chicago. And so she's excited to be there over the holidays. She's helping plan a holiday fundraiser. One of the good things about being off the island at the, in, in winter time is that she can get away from winter baseball. She has three younger, she has two younger brothers and an older brother who are their players. And, and so all her life, it's been, you know, Christmas time is always winter ball. And then MLB season starts. So she's excited to get off the island away from winter ball and away from baseball. And then lo and behold, the star MC of their holiday fundraiser that she's planning is Ben Thomas, former Chicago Cubs. Yay, go Cubs, my team. Um, former Chicago Cubs baseball player. And like her younger brother is one of Ben's biggest fans. And so the, the novella, it's it's short and sweet because it's one of four novellas in the anthology. But um, in a nutshell, it's like we've got Julia who is all business and no time for romance. And then we've got Ben who has come up with a game plan that he thinks um, can include both for them. And so that's in a nutshell. And just, it was really fun being able to include like some of the holiday traditions from Puerto Rico. Um, I talk about a parranda, which is like an all through the night Christmas caroling. And so I spent the whole time listening to music while I was writing, listening to music from my childhood and thinking of my abuela. And um, so it was really fun to write. Yeah, it sounds like it was fun, right? Which um, is going to lead me into my next question. And I'm actually going to circle back to that too, Priscilla, about those traditions. Um, but why do you guys think that holiday romances are a thing? I don't know about you guys, but there's mm. it, you may have noticed that there's been like a little bit of a surge in the holiday mm -hmm. romance genre, right? Um, yeah. Why? do you think first let's talk about why you guys want to write holiday romances like what about the holidays and, and romance and love excites you well, yeah can we just go yeah yeah like priscilla said it's that whole thing of like traditions and for me it's just my family has always you know the holidays is just the best time of year for us mm -hmm. um and I, I don't know which came first, the holiday romances I wrote or the Hallmark movies you watch or, you know, but it, it's, yeah. 
you just love reading about love and watching, you know, movies about love in during the holidays. Right. And, you know, I love Christmas, but I also love that I can now read these romances about other, you know, holidays around this time mm -hmm. and learn those uh, traditions that other, uh, you know, others have. So there's just something about this time that's magical. I wish I was in a place that snowed that would make it even, you know, better, but I'm in New Orleans. So, <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it's like I can get that feel of like, you know, being in a snowy cabin because I can get to it through books and stuff. So it's just something that's magical about this time. I absolutely love it. I think also family, whether it's found family or, or, you know, blood family getting together, the same reason why I, I write a lot of familia themes, as much as there's love and there's good feelings, there's also conflict, right? So, you know, like one of my, one of my girls, um, I have all adult kids now, but one of our favorite Christmas movies to watch when we get together is the family stone. Um, and so there is a lot of love, but there's a lot of conflict and there's, you know, um, going on. And so the holidays just kind of hypes that up a little bit. Like you want everything to be perfect, but nothing, you know, what is perfect. Right. And so it's kind of a mix of the magical time, but also there's a, a lot of, Think about all those times families are getting together to take a picture and something's going wrong and the mom's like, smile, damn it. We're taking a, you know, we're taking a picture, right? So like that's all happening at the same time. So I think it just makes it ripe for our books. Yeah, and I'll, I'll jump in. I, you know, I didn't set out to write a Christmas book. Um, St. Martin's Press asked my agent if I would be interested in writing a heartwarming Christmas novel for them. And I said, sure, that would be fun. And I, it, I was hooked. I mean, I have been a Hallmark fan forever. I mean, even back when it was just the commercials, I like to say that I, I loved Hallmark before Hallmark was cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember all the commercials they used to cry all because of their cards. Um, but I'd always watched the, the movies, but it never had really dawned on me to write a holiday romance. And so, you know, when I took the opportunity, it was, you know, I, I thought it would be fun because we always had a lot of tradition in our family. And I thought it'd be great to put it in a book but boy it is just so awesome to mm -hmm. spend your time writing all the you know, 400 pages of happiness you know even with the conflict you know there's you know, trees and tradition mm -hmm. all around you and i don't mind one bit sitting in my living room in 98 degrees with 89 percent yeah. place on i have no problem <laughs> with that <laughs> just to write something happy um mm -hmm. yeah it's it's a it's a lovely way to live. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, I have been I'm new to reading um holiday romances. I just had never really read any. So when um Simon and Schuster talked to us about writing uh, and our agent talked to us about writing, you know, a holiday book, I was like, Oh, I, you know, it's not something I had really considered. Um, but it's been so fun, especially this year, seeing how many oh. people have been like I didn't have one ounce of holiday spirit. I was not ready to put up my tree. Mm -hmm. I didn't, where I was like, I'm putting my tree up the day after that jack-o'-lantern goes in the trash. <laughs> well, she did. <laughs> I did. I was like, I am riding out the rest of this year in glitter and lights. <laughs> nice. Um, but so it's been really fun to see readers like who were like, I've just been having a rotten year. And yeah. it's yeah. been these like books about Christmas and family. And especially because people can't see their family. And mm -hmm. it was funny because our book is sort of Groundhog's Day-ish. And we didn't know we would be in this situation. But, but people have seemed to love it. And so um, that's been like a completely fun and unexpected part about it. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. I I started writing um, very short ones um, because I'm um, a Hallmarky to like my bone. And mm -hmm. I am such a huge fan of Hallmark. And I just wanted to give readers a little bit of joy yeah. Um, the same kind of joy I feel when I turn on a Hallmark movie. And um, if, I, I, I joke about this all the time with some of my other writer friends. If you could see me watching one, you would think that I was the biggest nerd because I sit there and I my eyes are glued to the screen and I'm just like this the whole time. <laughs> a huge <laughs> smile on my face. <laughs> it's completely normal. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just like you too, Nancy. I, I will turn on, you know, the, the AC, turn it, 
you know, cold <laughs> and put on the fake fire on the TV. <laughs> mm. <laughs> 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 um, just reading some comments here. Nice. Uh, somebody said they loved Holiday Home Run. It was such a fun read. Uh, and they love learning about holiday traditions and other cultures. Um, also, hello to the familiar folks in here. Christina Lauren and mm -hmm. um, Astrid just started your book. Nice. Hey, thank you. <laughs> so cool to see you both. <laughs> Family Stone was good. Uh, love seeing so many pictures of Inna Holidays. Inna Holidays is pure magic for the whole year. I loved Christmas That's Joy. That's a nice one. Yeah, I loved Christmas Joy movie on Hallmark mm -hmm. as well. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> there are so many movies. I mean, right. there's Hallmark. Netflix has some good ones. Yeah. Lifetime yeah. has had some good ones. Mm -hmm. I, I just think, I mean, especially this year, like people are, we're needing, I think we've gone the whole year and saying, you know, romance is such a wonderful genre. Um, you know, I, a lot of us like to think of it as like the genre of hope and we needed a lot of that. Mm -hmm. So like all this year, it's been mm -hmm. like escape with a good book. I, um, for holiday, I mean, for Island Affair, my tagline was going to be like head to Key West. And then it became escape to Key West, like when all of this happened. Uh, um, and so I feel like our all of our the holiday novels are it's like just extra. It's that, yeah. that hope and the, and the wonder and, and the celebration of love that is romance. But during the holidays and, and like, you know, like Christina said, we we need that a lot this year. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, I'm, I'm actually glad you mentioned Island Affair because. I love books, all season books. Like I like books that are very firmly planted in a season, even though I'll read them, like I'll read Island Affair in December. It doesn't have to be necessarily like a summary type read. Mm -hmm. um, and I love when you feel you can kind of get that atmospheric feel from a book. So, I mean, I'm a reader of Christmas romances in July. Like I have no, like if I just need that cozy feel, like I'll read them any time of year. And so I think for me, it's because it transports me to a certain feeling and maybe I'm missing that feeling, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, And so I really, I love that about romance is that really like ground our characters in a certain season and, mm -hmm. you know, transport the reader. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love that you brought that up too because I think a lot of people think when they hear holiday romance, they assume like, well, this is a specialty book. It's for the holidays and, you know, mm -hmm. you don't need to read it you yeah. probably won't want to read it during other times. But yeah, I find myself reading them too whenever I just want to feel that same feeling I feel around Christmas, that joy mm -hmm. of the season. So, Like, who is it? Cassandra said in the holidays is pure magic for the whole year. Like yes. 100%. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Um, also, I just want to take a second here to say to the audience, if you guys have questions, do feel free to put them in the comments. Um, we'll wait to uh, answer audience questions at the end, but if you have any, you can put them in the chat. Um, okay, so this Priscilla started to talk about this a little bit uh, when she was introducing her her novel, uh, not novella. But um, do you guys have any special holiday traditions that you love to do, either you know, with your family or yourself, and? How have they influenced your work? And maybe if you are willing to share something that maybe you've put into a into your work, we'd love to hear that. Who's going first? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll say that like I mean, this is true, probably true for most of us in this panel, but for me, so much of it is cooking with family. Yeah. You know, and those moments where we're together in the kitchen and we're listening mm -hmm. to our favorite Christmas music or holiday music and we're making our favorite food that we kind of save for just that time of year. And everything mm -hmm. tastes better and everything tastes different. And I mean, I have to admit, I'm really going to miss that this year. You know, I'm going to miss that sort of the kitchen's a little too warm. Everything smells good. You can't wait for the nap later. Like that yep. feeling of just <laughs> everybody being together. You know, I think just that yeah. vibe is my favorite tradition. Right. Yeah. And I'm very sad because I was supposed to eat her food and I cannot. Oh, <laughs> oh, sadness. I'll say I've been super thankful for technology because of that. Because my girls are older, so they're all off, you know, adulting. And usually um, at Thanksgiving, some of us will get together. But Christmas, we all, you know, we'll try to get together. One of my daughters works at a hospital. So every year, like she, she 
Sometimes she can, sometimes she can't, like at, at, at Christmas time. Um, but we always make a gingerbread house. We started when my youngest, who just turned 26, was probably just a couple years old. We started making just one house, and then we graduated later um, to making like our favorite buildings. One year, um, my middle one made the Roman Colosseum, and the other one, my oldest, my first, and I made. Um, a pavilion in Guell Park, but out of, you know, out of gingerbread. And so this year, since they can't come, like we've already talked about, okay, so we're going to set times where we can zoom and like one night we'll be zooming and we'll be baking and cutting out the pieces. And then another time we'll zoom to be decorating and putting them all together, just trying to, to keep up like the traditions that are important to us, but you know, you got to be safe and we can't be together. So. Yeah. You know, when I was a little girl, my mom's family is really big. She's one of six and everybody's got a lot of kids. And so I was really young when they decided, OK, we're not exchanging gifts anymore. We're going to create these homemade ornaments. Oh, the problem was with so many darn people, we had to start in June to be able to make the <laughs> ornaments by December when we were going to get together as a family. Um, but we loved it. And I guess the other unfortunate thing is my family is very competitive. So, I mean, everybody would kind of outdo each other every year with like the best ornaments. But so I have a whole tree of these homemade ornaments that I've oh, had for cool. years. That is awesome. But, yeah. So wow. I love that kind of craftiness, whether it's gingerbread houses or mm -hmm. crafting ornaments and those things kind of end up in my books too um right. you know where they're decorating their trees with something special or nature um and, and improvising so yeah i think crafty things just kind of getting down to the basics and of uh of any craft right. yeah um for me we have so many different <laughs> traditions yeah. you know one thing my family has done for years is that we put up this huge christmas village uh, with the little uh, Department 56 houses. Yes. We have literally hundreds of them. I put up a small one this year. Um, so at least I have that one tradition that I will be able to keep because COVID is probably going to cancel yeah. everything else. Um, yeah. I actually live in a town that uh, they have this thing called bonfires on the levee. And it's gotten so mm -hmm. big that there are people that literally come from around the world. There mm -hmm. are hundreds of bonfires that line the Mississippi River on the levee to mm -hmm. welcome Papa Noel. Uh, yeah, if you look it up, it's wow, gorgeous. Cool. Um, and it's a tradition. Every family, you know, builds the bonfire and they it's <clears throat> 20,000 or so people who come in this little small town yeah. of about 4,000 people, you know, they just rush in and yeah. it's welcome Santa and they probably will not do that this year. Oh um, man. Um, you know, you can't have 20,000 people. No. <laughs> uh, but the thing I'm probably going to miss the most is our uh, family reindeer games that we do. Nancy, like you, <sighs> mom is one of 11. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, on my mom's side of the family, we have uh, the last time I counted, we were at 96 people with my aunts, uncles, their kids and now grandkids. Oh. And when we get together, it's usually about 50 of us who can get together. But we'll do like the ugly sweater. Last year we did um, pajama things and we just get together like the week before Christmas at someone's house and we do all of these reindeer games and food and everything. And it's the one year that I need it the most. And I know we're not going to do it. We're trying to figure out how to zoom it, but it's just not going to be the same. Um, mm -hmm. But we will so try. <laughs> we'll try. We're a very close family, all of us. <laughs> you know, it's, um, it's a lot of us, but we're very close. And uh, it'll be hard not to yeah. do that this year, but we're going to try to make the most of it. The videos that you've shared, um, the games that you guys play are so funny. I love it. Fun. Mm -hmm. yeah, it really is. It's we we are yeah. we're a corny bunch, but we're fun. <laughs> it's, it's like, that makes it better. Fun. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We do our um, little little things that we have Christmas Eve. Um, we'll just do you know like via FaceTime or via. There was one year that. My youngest was home, but um, my first daughter was in Machu Picchu with her boyfriend, and my middle one was volunteering in India. Um, and these are the these are the things I think show up like in my book as far as just um, 
the connections between your loved ones that, that I hope anyway, you know, that, that I think show up in all of our books. Um, you know, my girls were older and there comes a, a time where you wonder like all these little traditions that you used to do, are they outgrowing them? Are they, yeah. um, and so we were on our way to, to mass and I got a, a text message um, you know, like from both, like, hey, let us know when you're home from church and you're going to read Twas the Night Before Christmas because we always read it out loud together. And um, so we had, I had one on FaceTime in, in Peru and one on a conference call on, on another phone and my youngest beside me, and we just took turns, you know, reading um, Twas the Night Before Christmas. And that, as a, as a, mom, like I, that was something that was really touching that, you know, thousands of miles away, but we were still able and, and that they still wanted to, and, you know, to, to have those close connections with, with family. So, and so that's just kind of what we'll, we'll do also this year open. Everybody's going to get pajamas because we always do Christmas Eve and then we'll mm -hmm. sit around and, and read via zoom if, if it's via zoom or, or FaceTime. We usually go see the lights at <coughs> Temple Square because I live in Utah um, I'm not Mormon, but that's just like what you do in Utah. And um, my daughter's 20 this year and my nephews are all older. So that's like the one time when we all get together. And that's like when it officially feels like, you know, the holiday season. But this year, they're only going to they're going to keep the gates closed. So you can only look on the sidewalk and then that's just going to have thousands of people gathered on the sidewalk. So we won't do that this year, but I was actually looking forward to it because I was like, Oh, it's outside and yeah. it's always yeah. freezing. So masks will be perfect, but we're not going to do it. So I'm a little sad about that. That's like my brother. Nice thing. We always do. Hmm. Yeah, so Maybe you can come up with something different. I know. Well, it's like he lives like three minutes away, but we don't see each oh. other because you know, so busyness. The busyness mm -hmm. of life. Well, he has teenagers that are like working and going to school. And so, um, you know, they're mm -hmm. asking us in Utah to not intermingle households at all. Yeah. So we're not doing that. And it's too cold to hang outside. And in the summer we could do yeah. that. But yeah, no, but that's good that you're, they're being safe. Yep. Yes. yep. Yeah. And at least we have our holiday stories, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Keep us warm. <laughs> Stay home and read a romance novel. <laughs> yeah. No notes required. <laughs> yes. Um, so what's something that you'd like to see more of in holiday romances, whether that be on the publishing front or even on the movie front, because we've seen that just as with publishing, we've seen the surge, right, with movies as well. Priscilla mentioned, you know, Lifetime, um, Hallmark, of course, and um, there's one called Up TV, Netflix. Yeah, Netflix um, has some, yeah. Right. And I, I've been hearing even, you know, more networks are planning to get involved in this, you know, in the future. So, um, What's something that you would like to see more of in holiday romances? I think I'd like to see non-American celebrations highlighted yeah. a little bit more. I mean, I obviously just, I grew up in California. This is what I do, but I really love reading stories where there's just something else happening um, mm -hmm. than what I've always known. And so I would love to see more of those. Yeah. And I mean, like sort of mainstream Christian white. <laughs> You know, there's there's a lot of other American stories that we can hear. Yeah, of, mm -hmm. yeah sure. So I kind of, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I will. I want to be a little hotter. I mean, I love the kiss. I love the hand <laughs> Give me a little bit more. Right. More than nose rubbing? Thank you, Sarah. Oh, more, more than nose rubbing? Just a little. Just a little. Yeah. That, you know, mm -hmm. something I can still watch in the room with mom. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. A little bit more of really sexy anthology in. next year. I think that's what we need. We need like a super sexy Christmas anthology. I maybe. Oh. <laughs> Her wheels are turning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Emails everybody. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. That's a good call. Yeah, I want it. I think that's both cool. of those are. Um, kind yeah. of like what I was leaning towards is, I mean, we're see, we've seen this year a little bit more diversity mm -hmm. in, in some of the movies. I just want it to keep going in that yeah. direction and just to explore whether it is more, more holiday, um, 
whether it's traditions or you know re religious things or, or whatever it is and then um i would love if it was different countries but um, yeah. you know the different celebrations that would be mm -hmm. really nice yes. yeah so um steamier more diversity we've got it we've got a to-do list here going yeah <laughs> i'm not looking for any steam i don't want to melt any of the snowflakes <laughs> I was waiting for Nancy to come in. <laughs> I like them really clean and sweet. And I like Eskimo kisses. I give them to my dog all the time. I say steamy, but I don't write steamy either. So. <laughs> kind of warm um, holiday. And that would be not the weather, not the love. <laughs> Because there's so much of the country that experiences green Christmas. I think it would be really fun to have a few yeah. more like green Christmas stories. Um, yes, true. And I think there are some fun things that you could do around that. So yes. on the movie side, which yes. they really don't do. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fair. Katrina says um, you want Hallmark after dark. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's what it would be. That's what the life one is, right? <laughs> Nice. I can't believe I said yeah. it. I'm sorry. Don't tell me. <laughs> what are you talking about? I was like, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But Nancy, I think you're right. Um, like we have Christmas in the Keys, uh, you know, so, and there's no snow. Mm -mm. So nope. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> and what do we call enough snow? I, um, <laughs> I like I like the sweeter ones as well. As well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining. I, think, I do think there's room for both, though. There's definitely room for both. Okay. Yes. Oh my gosh! And In my head right now, I'm hearing Santa baby. <laughs> <laughs> Farah. <laughs> I'm thinking of Lo and I watching um, Operation. What was it? Christmas drop. Christmas drop. Oh, and we were gosh. like, we're waiting for them to kiss it. Then we had to keep reminding ourselves that it was rated G. <laughs> yeah. We were like, wait a minute. Like, Tangled is PG. <laughs> this is P. <laughs> well, I but there say, was um, a nice scene when he came out of the water from surfing. See? <laughs> yes. yes. No arguments here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say though, on the diversity front, I it, it's coming. Like I, I'm actually taking a class on how to write a Hallmark movie right now, and oh, wow. um, my awesome instructor has produced Hallmark films, and she said that that is one of the things that's going to be coming. So be on the lookout. Yeah, nice. yeah, it's gonna, they're they're trying to step it up. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna actually take some questions here. I did have one more question, but I also want to make sure we get to these. Uh, Astrid is asking, what was the first holiday movie you loved? Oh, my. Oh God. Like as a kid? Or as Probably Home Alone. <laughs> I was like, the great. <laughs> Charlie Brown. I know. Yeah. 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 Maybe I, still, say, I say, still love that original Rudolph. And I always say it's claymation, but it's really not. It's not. When the yeah, bone hit him on the head and his eyes like yeah. flew around, I still cry during that scene, even oh. now. Um, but that's probably my very favorite. Always has been. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Scrooge always scared me. Yeah. <laughs> the Grinch freaked me out. <laughs> movie, movie. I remember um, Natalie Wood, like a Miracle on 34th Street, like that old black and white one. Even mm. then, it was a romance, you know, it was a holiday mm. romance. Yes. Yep. So. I love comedy, though. Like, give me Christmas Vacation and Elf. Like, I just love those movies <laughs> yeah. so much. <laughs> That's probably me. Like, yeah, Christmas Vacation. Um, although, Nancy. I love the Frosty and Rudolph yeah. because yeah. my grandfather, my grandfather would always call, even if we told him the day before, we know it's coming on, he would still call and let us know Frosty oh. and Rudolph. <laughs> That's so cute. Well, I yeah. think they were old, younger I than it. I am. But does everybody, and you, maybe you don't remember because you're not as old as I am, but the Norelco commercials with the little snowman on the we're straight road. Okay. Yeah, mm. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I love a yeah. Christmas story and I watch that every year when the yes. marathon is on. Classic. Absolutely. Every year we want Elf is a must watch and, and 
the, mm -hmm. the family stone. And I, there was one other one. That was, um, I like the holiday. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Speaking of romance where yes. they swap houses. Mm -hmm. That's a good mm -hmm. one. The, uh, the Holiday and Love Actually, too, is a good one. I've never seen Love Actually. Oh, oh my gosh. Some gosh. of them are so sad. And it's turned into like a stubborn thing. But I will tell you this, that when everybody's doing a <laughs> thing, so I'm just stubborn. like, I'm like, well, I don't want to do it. <laughs> she's like, everyone's telling me to, so now I'm definitely not going to do it. Some of those stories are super sad. Some yeah, of them are, but I feel like in general, are. they end on like, a, you know, yeah. in a good yeah. place for the most mm -hmm. part. Yeah. Also, the kid from Love Actually is that yes. Benny character in Queen's Gambit. And it took me like a full forever to figure yeah. it out. I was like, where have I seen him before? <laughs> Why is he a small child in my head? <laughs> is, isn't, he also, isn't he also in Game of Thrones? Yeah, that's what yeah, my husband yeah. kept saying. He's like, you know him from Game yeah. of Thrones. I was like, no, no, no. That's I mean, yes, but that's not what I'm thinking. So Love yeah. Actually. The little drummer mm -hmm. kid. Hmm. <laughs> In yes. terms of the clay ones, I really like Jack Frost, which I know is not one that's called oh. very often, but I really like Jack Frost. Cute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you guys have any, mo any more modern ones? Like, are you watching, I'll ask this, are you watching Hallmark and Lifetime right now? And have you had a favorite so far? Oh, my favorite all time Hallmark Christmas movie is The Christmas Ornament. Oh, and it's, good one. Uh, yeah, Kelly Martin and Cameron, mm -hmm. and I, uh, oh my gosh, it's just the best movie. And when he gives her that wreath of the little gloves, the old lady's <laughs> gloves that he pretends to sell and just gives money for, oh, I just love it. I love oh. the butterfly ornament. I just, yeah, that's my very favorite. I have it on DVD. I have it on my DVR. <laughs> I give it away every oh, man. year. <laughs> and I, I actually got to meet Kelly um, at one of the Hallmark parties and I pulled her and her husband aside and I was like, I am so sorry, but I've got to tell you how much that movie meant to me. And she was really <laughs> sweet because I had lost my husband. Um, and so that's kind of why that whole widow story you know, really struck me so much. And she said, oh, I'm so glad. She said, I just felt like it was such an important role to give it the right attention. And um, she was just so gracious and humble and mm -hmm. sweet. And um, it made the movie even that much more special. Oh, wow. <laughs> I love that. Wow. I love wow. that. Um, <laughs> I just watched da um, Dash and Lily um, on Netflix. <gasps> oh, my gosh. That's, that's like one of my... That favorite, yeah. favorite books. And so I was being really stubborn <laughs> when like I saw the the um, trailer for it because he did not look anything like the dash in my head. Um, <laughs> but, but I watched it and it was really charming and adorable. And um, it was really amazing to see like New York because yes. I haven't, it feels like I haven't been anywhere in so long. Um, yeah, so that was really, really cute. I'm supposed to watch Holiday, I think with Lowe's daughter. <laughs> She and my daughter have movie dates almost every day. It's very cute. I oh love all the princess switch movies. I think those are like adorable and crack. I just can't stop. Like in this <laughs> one, it has the new one has three. I was like, yes, let's do four next year. Please do four. <laughs> is there going to be four of her? I hope so. I love it. Christina, I haven't, I have not read the book for Dash and Lily, I, but I binged. So I, I thought I'm just going to watch a couple because so many people have said, and then I watched them all like in one evening. <laughs> the book is um, so which, charming. Is the it, book is it, amazing. Yeah. There's okay, actually so several, definitely. but the first one, you can just read the first one and it's spectacular. Yeah. Oh, good. Well, I loved um, the, the, the holidays that I kept thinking, I want to go, I want someone to leave me notes in the strand, please. Uh, um, you know, or, or give me a, give, give me a scavenger hunt. It was, it was so good. Just the whole, uh, um, the nostalgia, like it, it's hitting at the at the mm -hmm. right time, almost. You know, like yeah. for people who have been in the Strand to to remember, and then to hope we go back to that, and then just life in the city during the holidays. Um, it was probably it's tapping so many so many things inside people. I loved it. I'm clearly not a New Yorker though, because I was like so concerned that these were supposed to be teenagers and they were just running all over the place. Oh, no, no. <laughs> I was like, wait, I thought they were like 30. <laughs> not you, Tom. Um, I just saw one, uh, I think it's Hallmark. It was a few weeks ago called Christmas in Vienna. Yeah. Um, wow. I absolutely loved it. And I think it's again because I can't go anywhere. Oh, and yeah. you know, it was just 
Beautiful. So now, of course, mm -hmm. Vienna is on my list of places that I have to go to when we can travel again. But it was it was such a charming movie. And then just the, the shots of, you know, all the architecture yeah. and yeah. I have to. I have to I think that, I think that one's on our DVR um, to watch. So I'll, I'll have to. My, my mom and dad, my mom, like the, every Hallmark movie that is on is is recorded on our DVR. <laughs> um, too, at the moment. I know. They're like, we're running out of room. I'm like, we'll watch them and delete them. Uh, <laughs> um, but another, another new one that's good that came out and it is um, Zoe Archer's book, but it's um, oh, yeah. a timeless, I'm going to mess up a the title, Man, a, timeless a timeless Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, it's based yeah. on, on Zo and that one was really good too. Um, yeah. it's, a, it's a time travel um, during the holidays. Uh, and so I really like that one. I adore that one. And Ryan Pavey is yeah. my absolute favorite. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Um, that, that one could have been a Hallmark after dark and I would have been like, okay. <laughs> with, him, with him. Yes. I mean, in that case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, Priscilla, I will give your parents a word of advice. Get friendly TV because it's unlimited DVR. <laughs> uh, you can, you can I love it. friendly TV. And you get all of the Hallmark networks yes. in one place. And it's like, yes. Ooh. yeah, it's awesome. Yes. We might have to investigate between like uh, Gator football games and Hallmark movies. We're almost out of space. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it's unlimited with friendly. So I, I highly nice. recommend. <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> I would. If I tried to tell you all my favorite Hallmark movies, we would be here all night. So yeah. <laughs> I'm going to um, ask another question here. Um, do you guys have any plans for future holiday romance books that you're able to share mm. yet besides the sexy anthology? <laughs> <laughs> um, I I think ideas, but I, but well, I know ideas. I have like, I have ideas, but nothing that is solid. Um, I, can, funny. I can share. So I've yeah. got, I think I've got what, nine or 10, I don't know how many Christmas books I've got, but next Christmas I am taking a year off of Christmas release. And um, in 2022, Jingle Sales will be coming out. And it's mm -hmm. a, a gentleman who's got a sailboat um, who is stuck in port trying to get his boat worked on and uh, ends up crossing paths with the young lady who's running the hammock shop on the pier. Oh. And um, it, it incorporates the Great Loop, which is a loop up and around, uh, you know, up the East Coast and around uh, the waterways. It's pretty pretty fun. It's been neat to research, and, and that one won't come out until 2022. So. A year off for Christmas for Nancy. <laughs> yeah, that sounds good. That's awesome. I want. I want to work in a hammock shop. I, yeah. I probably nap too much, but uh, <laughs> I, I, could I could be together. the hammock nap tester. I could be the hammock nap tester. <laughs> I don't think we have and, what planned, but it would be fun. Um, yeah. Would you be we, other than the anthology? Right. That's what that was my follow up question. Then, if you don't have one necessarily that will be released, do you have plans to maybe write anything else? <laughs> like, would you want to? Oh, I um, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I I, think so. I'll, I'll say I'll be working on um, a short, um, a holiday novella for something um, at some point next year. Yeah, but that's all I can say. Yeah, <laughs> understandable. Yeah. What did you say, Tara? I missed that. I love the novellas. I I've lost count of how many of those I've done too, because they're yeah. such you know they're they're nice little nuggets. That's why I love to yeah. call them yeah. little holiday mm -hmm. nuggets. That's easy to read and you know something quick for people to read just to get into the spirit. So yeah, I'll probably write one in the future, but probably not next year. Yeah. yeah. Well, and those little novellas or novelettes um, are so nice too because this time of year we don't have as much time to read. Yeah. But you can get through right. kind of a shorter story. So I was part of um, the anthology Christmas Actually, playing off of Love Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that is, it's 99 cents through today. After today, it'll be back up to regular price. But um, it was 11 stories, and that was really fun to be a part of. Mm -hmm. um, 
But that was the first short story I'd written like that. It's 20,000 words. It was hard. It's harder to write short. It is. <laughs> it is. My, my stories are all 15,000 words or less. I, I do. It's hard getting all, getting all the beats in. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. But Holiday I Home Run was it. the first time I wrote something short. Yeah. yeah. I love I to do my, it, though. I think my editor took 15,000 words out of my book. Uh, the last time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you know what? I my last manuscript was um, was over like what my contract said, and I hadn't even realized. And it's it is what it needs to be. But afterwards, when I when I realized how much, I thought, oh my gosh, that's almost a novella. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, but those words needed to be in there. Yeah, and yet, uh, so. Well, I wish I was long-winded. I just tend to be short-winded. Even mm -hmm. that's a taking, good skill to have. I think it's a good skill <laughs> to have. Yeah, because then they just cut them, and you think, "Why did I use those words?" Yeah. <laughs> Our editor. I think you could lose the first ten thousand words of this book. Oh, oh, my God. God. <laughs> yes. Oh man. Yeah, that's a hard one. Um. We have a few more minutes here, so I'm gonna take this last question in here. It says, is there a specific holiday that you'd like to see more of um, in books? I want a Thanksgiving <laughs> holiday book. <laughs> oh, I was like, Halloween. <laughs> yeah, Halloween. Halloween. Ooh, Halloween. That's Halloween. I love I've... Halloween everything. Like all the stupid <laughs> Netflix movies. I've seen Huey Halloween so many damn times. <laughs> it's a graveyard romance. Like, yes, you know what I mean. Oh, I want, like, well, like, and funny. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see Dwali. Is that how it's pronounced? The festival. Mm -hmm. of and I would yeah. love to because it's so beautiful. I yeah. would love to see uh, a romance set around that oh, time. Uh, that actually oh, good idea. Yeah. That would and be a beautiful movie because I have to see it in, in, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. in the movie yeah. so I can really see it come. Yeah. Give us the book and then sell the film rights, somebody. Yes. Please. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that is a good one. I'd love to see that I'm, as well. Yeah. I'm trying to think, but those are all good. Good. You know, I'm trying to think, is there a spring one, but not a, not that strikes me as like romantic. <laughs> You know, Easter is well, romantic. <laughs> <laughs> the resurrection of Jesus. Easter egg hunt. Hunt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Easter egg hunt. That would be cute. <laughs> um, that would be but I do have to say, do you know what? Mia Mia Sosa, um, her book, uh, the the worst best man. There is a scene. Uh, thinking of this is like a really hard stretch, but thinking of spring, and so thinking of tulips. Right. So go with me still. But there is a scene um, at like a tulip. I don't know if it's a tulip like a, it's not a garden, but like a tulip farm and and the hood of a, of a car and um, very, very good scene. So anyway, springy, you know, like <laughs> maybe not. I'm me like, where am I? Everyone else. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not a holiday, but it's spring. <laughs> and and that scene is so good. So if you've not read The Worst Best Man. So oh good. I love that and book. And you'll thank yeah. me. The tulip scene <laughs> and the hood of the car. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go get yeah. it right now. After, get <laughs> after you read all of our books? No, I'm kidding. It's a really good one. I actually want to know what everyone's favorite book of 2020 has been. Oh, gosh. oh man, can I do like one a month? <laughs> I know that's no. so I'm gonna just do one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just I just said Mia's was, was um good. I, usually I say Ferris uh, um as well. Daniel is so <laughs> hunky. Daniel is so hunky. Um, but um you had me at Ola by Alexis Staria. So is good. Amazing. Yeah, we love that um, book. Yeah. That's a great so, recommendation. Um Sonali's um oh, recipe for or recipe for yep. persuasion. Yeah. I'll be honest, the one that comes to mind for me the most is Pintip Dunn's uh, Dating Makes Perfect. Yes. I just brought it for my, it's a YA, but I just, I adored it so much. Uh, I just bought it for my 12 year old niece because she, uh, I want her to read more. And she mm -hmm. said that she wants to, but she wants them to be romances and she can't read mine. 
Sorry, Nancy. You, you're <laughs> kind of getting an idea. <laughs> but Pen Tips uh, Dating Makes Perfect was just such an adorable book. So it's Aww. definitely yeah. it's hard to pick one. I'm the worst at picking like the favorite, mm, but it's yeah, of course. it stands out to me as just one. I loved it. Yeah. Her cover is super cute. Yes, yes. Um, I'm going to say uh, a book that doesn't come out till next year. <laughs> That's called Heart and Soul by Jen Frederick. And uh, just because Lo and I have watched like so much K-drama and stuff this year and it's set in Seoul. Um, it's about this girl who goes to, she's adopt, she's a Korean American adoptee and she goes to find her dad. And so it just has all the like delicious cracky sort of stuff, you know, and um, he has a dimple, which is like my thing. Oh. Um, and then um, uh, let's see which one. Uh, the wedding, I think it's called The Wedding List. I loved that book. It's a thriller by Lucy. Oh, Lucy Foley. There we go. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. just so beautifully written. It like is. so atmospheric and just fabulous. Yes. I and I'm I'm party. so close to being done with Obama's book. I'm like so <laughs> close. <laughs> I feel like it's such like a thing to have finished that huge book. And I'm I'm just like so into smart people and he's so smart. So today I was just like <laughs> having such a swoony, crushy moment over like how smart he is. It's so oh, good. Yeah. If anybody if anybody has time to read it, it's so great. I'll do the audio book for that one. Oh yeah. yes, yes. It's like 30 hours, but it's yeah. Yes, but I is keep it, going. Is, I have 19 he, hours left. Yeah. Is he narrating it? Does he narrate it like Michelle? Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then it's like he's talking to you. Yes. That's it. Yeah. It's so it's just so calming and comforting. Yeah. yeah. Oh my. Now I told now now I'm thinking I want to ask you, but that would take us forever. Like, what K dramas have you seen? But so we totally oh, we totally just side. Lo will have a spreadsheet. Yes, yeah. I, I had I had never watched one until the pandemic, and then Quana Jackson. Ooh, that's another good one. Real Men Knit. Yes. That's another yeah, book I, I would totally yeah. recommend. Quana um, shared a list of some K dramas in the middle of the you know in, of the pandemic, or not. I guess like in March. And um, I made the mistake, I, I don't want to say mistake, but of watching one and then forget it. I like mm -hmm. <laughs> dove into that hole and have not looked back. Well, here's the thing though. I feel like they're making television ah. the way that we want to watch it. Like they're being, they're, they're, you might say they're self-indulgent, but they let us spend so much time with the characters and the relationship yes. building. And I just feel like it's just, it's how I want to watch TV. I just finished. Um, my my firstborn is calling me out in the comments. Alexa. <laughs> I just I just finished Healer and um that is like my new favorite. I I mean Crash really? Landing on You will probably I was like what? Well, but did, but <laughs> Healer, are you think it's okay to not be okay? Yeah. No, it's amazing. Wow. I love them all. Yeah. There's so many good ones. But Healer is the one I just finished and I want to write fan oh, fiction for it. I love it so much. <gasps> okay, I haven't seen that one yet. It's on my must watch. <laughs> when they start these okay. dramas, I swear I'm I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> uh, I was showing my, I was teaching my, my, my youngest this, she was like, cause have you seen the Korean dad on TikTok? Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> okay, Nancy, did anyway. you share a favorite book? Uh, I didn't, but you know what? I, this year has been really hard for me to read as much yeah. as I like. So it's all been my girlfriend's books and I don't really, oh. <laughs> I don't want to call out one girlfriend over another. So I don't want to say. Uh, <laughs> oh. That's fair. <laughs> Aren't you a <laughs> so. um, my favorite book is actually a YA book this year, which was Grown by Tiffany Jackson. Oh, yeah. Really, oh, I heard really that's good. amazing. I haven't read it yet. I've heard that's very yeah, good. It's so good. It's so good. Really? I, I, I normally. I have because I read for a living. I'm I'm an editor by day, and I usually at night I'm just falling asleep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I stayed up reading that book, wow. so that's oh, wow. when that's when yeah. I know it's a good <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, and it's nothing that's personal crazy. against any authors or anything. It's just that like if I can stay up while like when I'm dead tired, I know mm -hmm. it was good. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I also read a lot yeah. of poetry this year because I had a hard time reading too. Mm -hmm. um, 
And one of my favorites was uh, ship is still a sinking ship. And I forget, uh, oh no, a sinking ship is still a ship. Um, and it's by Ariel, I forget his last name, but it's a local press we have out here. Um, I really like that one. Um, a sinking ship is still a ship? Yes. Wow. Yeah, isn't that a great title? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It, like it really gets you thinking. Oh, there's someone oh, said Ariel thank Francisco. You. Thank yes. you. Thank you, OCLS. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, guys, Christina, it's, um, Christina, what was the title of the book that's coming up that you said in 2021? It's called Heart, Heart and Soul, Soul by Jen Frederick. Heart? Okay. Yeah, it's from Berkeley. It's very good. I'll have to look for that one. I'm sure it's on, it's on pre order. So, you guys, we are at the hour mark here. Um, thank you for taking the time to chat with us today. I really loved hearing about each of your projects and uh, talking about geeking out on holiday romances. <laughs> I'm looking forward to all of the projects that you guys will be uh, publishing in the future. I'll keep my eyes peeled for the sexy anthology. Just <laughs> had to get one more in there. To get one more in there. <laughs> I will never live it down. You're never going to say you're never going to. I love it. Um, Sarah, after everybody is no. saying thanks so much. It was great. Um, everybody in the comments here. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Thank for you. Everybody Thank for you. Thank you. Thanks for getting and us all together. It was fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thanks for hosting OC Library. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, OCLS. And thank you, Sarah. Um, yeah. I think Sarah's going to come back on. Yeah. 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 All right. Um, I just want to thank you all so much for being here tonight and chatting with us. And Raquel, thank you for moderating. I just have a couple announcements. We're going to say goodbye to the authors um, before I do those. So bye, everyone. And there we go. All right. Um, thank you again for joining us. Uh, as a reminder, this event is part of OCLS's Random Fandom Week. We have a uh, full week of programming for all ages, celebrating everything from like Schitt's Creek to Stranger Things to Star Wars. Um, and you can visit OCLS.info slash random fandom, which is right there um, for a full list of events. Uh, some upcoming ones that I'm working on that I wanted to make sure to tell you about is tomorrow we have uh, Black Panther and Evolution of the Superhero. Author and historian Julian Chambliss will trace the evolution of the Black Panther from an Afri African hero to an African-American icon. And I'll go ahead and put the link for that in the comments. That is on Zoom, so you, have to, you do have to register to see it, and it won't be recorded like this one. Um, and then on Wednesday, we have Forensic Files, The Library, and You, uh, author and FDLE firearms crime lab analyst, Kristen Durfee, will discuss her work and how the science helps solve crimes. And so I'll put that link there as well, because you do have to register for that one again. Also, um, thank you so much for attending today. Please fill out the survey if you'd like and let us know how you enjoyed today's program and also what kind of programs you'd like to see in the future. And I think that is it. So um, we're going to say good night. Everyone stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll see you next time. Bye.